the GRADE study was a comparative effectiveness study designed to compare four very common combinations of glucose-lowering medications at the time at which a second medication is required after metformin. So different to many of the cardiovascular outcome trials that we've seen reported in recent years, GRADE enrolled patients with diabetes duration of less than 10 years. And in the end, GRADE, the mean duration of diabetes in GRADE was about four years with very low rates of cardiovascular disease at baseline. And GRADE randomly assigned participants to four active treatment arms. Again, quite different to other studies. There was no placebo control. And the medications compared as second-line therapy were a sulfonylurea, glomeparide, given daily, a DPP-4 inhibitor, citagliptin, given daily, a GLP-1 receptor agonist, liraglutide, given daily, and basal insulin glargine, also given daily. Patients were randomly assigned to these medications at baseline, and one of the goals of GRADE was to compare these treatments over the many years that people with type 2 diabetes must take them. So also, unlike earlier trials, GRADE was a very long-term trial with an average duration of follow-up of nearly five years, and some patients enrolled for up to eight years. Since we followed patients over time, we were able to assess our primary, secondary, and other outcomes um, really robustly. So 5,000 participants were enrolled in GRADE, 1,250 in each arm. And what we found was that over time, the two medications taken by injection, glargine insulin and liraglutide, were slightly better at reaching and keeping the A1C level less than 7% over the course of the study compared to either of the two pills, glomeparide or citagliptin. When we looked at which medication worked better in keeping the A1C less than 7.5, glargine was the most effective, followed by liraglutide, glomeparide, and then citagliptin. So you've asked why insulin and liraglutide may have performed better than the other drugs in the study. I think people who are familiar with the mechanisms of action may speculate on why that could be. I can tell you that one of the most interesting things coming out of GRADE will be a lot of the detailed data that we are not yet able to present. But we measured, um, we conducted oral glucose tolerance tests on participants, and we're going to be able to assess insulin resistance and beta cell function over time. And so we'll really be able to look at the mechanisms of insulin secretion and insulin resistance over time with these medications. And I think ultimately that will help provide the explanatory mechanism for um, the comparative effectiveness of these four combinations of medications. There were some surprising results. We have not yet finished adjudicating all of the cardiovascular outcomes, and so those results are preliminary. But there appeared to have been a slight benefit for liraglutide when we looked at a composite of all cardiovascular events in the trial. Again, I caution that that result is very preliminary. We have yet to finalize adjudication of all the events, and that event may change over time. But that was um, a bit of a surprising finding indeed. I think the main clinical take-home message over time is that, you know, People often don't start insulin early in the course of treatment, but in fact, insulin early in the course of treatment of diabetes was highly effective over time with very low rates of hypoglycemia and weight stability over time, which I think people may find surprising. And liraglutide similarly was a, a very effective treatment. Um, I think what will ultimately come out of GRADE is that we really will be able to individualize treatments for, for, for people. I mean, we know that it's very important in diabetes to find a treatment regimen that works for any individual that a participant, that a, a person can commit to and use over time. And I think what we'll be able to tell from grade over time is characteristics of patients that correlate with success or lack of success of a particular treatment regimen. And as the uh, data is published in the coming you know, weeks to months to years, I think we're really going to gain a lot of insight about the early management of type 2 diabetes after metformin. The question is where SGLT2 inhibitors fit in. One challenge with GRADE is that it was a very long-term trial, designed to be a long-term trial. And in fact, the trial was designed in 2012 and 2013 and enrolled its first participant in 2014, just after the first SGLT2 inhibitor, canagliflozin, had been approved in the United States. And GRADE, as a comparative effectiveness trial, was only going to enroll FDA-approved combinations of medications. And at the time that the trial was designed, not only was not only were SGLT2 inhibitors not approved, but the combination of metformin and canagliflozin was not yet approved. And it really was impractical to then add a fifth arm to the trial. And certainly, SGLT2 inhibitors have been really important in the treatment of diabetes, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. 
Uh, and it's a shame that we don't have that medication in the trial, but what I think is important to recognize is that the four medications used in GRADE will continue to be very commonly used medications and understanding their benefits and risks is very important.